Hello, my name is Clarity Haynes and I'm a visual artist and I am excited to have you come visit my studio, which is in the Catskills Mountains where my partner Kate Hawes and I live. She's a woodworker and I'm a painter. So we have adjoining workspaces um, right next to our house. So it's a wonderful situation and um, I am currently involved in two projects at the Aldridge. One is the Aldridge Care Box project, which has five artists with small uh, limited edition artworks in each one that people can check out as if from a library. And I created um, five small blank books, which I added collage to, and I'm inviting participants to add their own uh, artwork and or writing in response to some prompts that I put in there that have to do with life in the pandemic. Um, and then I'm also going to be participating in the Aldrich Projects, which uh, will consist of several paintings um, from my Alter series. And that project is going to be titled um, Collective Transmission, which is also the title of my books. Collective Transmission 2020 to 2021. And the paintings will be on view in the Aldrich as part of Collective Transmission for several months, four or five months starting in April. So I'm super excited about that. And now I'm gonna turn the camera around and take you on a tour of my studio. I went to film school when I was young. So when I was about 20. So I'm gonna to try to keep the camera steady, but um, bear with me if it is not perfect. Okay. This is a communal space for both my partner and I, and this is my studio, which uh, I usually keep closed <clears throat> with a paintbrush or a brick. And here we are. I'm gonna turn on the lights. And you'll see a lot of things in here that are objects that I have collected and used in my altar paintings. The altar paintings are paintings of homemade feminist altars. And I am inspired by many feminist thinkers, including Audre Lorde, the late black lesbian feminist poet, Audre Lorde. I've had this poster since the 90s. And here we have my attempt at organization of objects for my altars. Um, I'm not naturally an organized person. So this was a big project for me to try to catalog different kinds of things that I use in my paintings so that when I'm ready to make a new painting, I can choose and compose it from all these things that are objects that are images and aesthetics that mean something to me and are empowering to me such as different kinds of fabrics and prints and photographs and things I've held on to sometimes for many, many years. You will see this mask, this Judy Chicago mask that she made in 2020 in one of the paintings as well. So <clears throat> now we're gonna move a little bit. I've been working on some shaped canvases in the past year experimenting with shaped canvases as well as a new subject matter. This is a painting in progress uh, on, a, on a tondo, which I'm sort of thinking of Courbet's origin of the world painting. I'm really interested in images of crowning. These paintings come from images on the internet um, of birth that different midwives and doctors and birth photographers have posted and I'm really grateful for this online community around birth. I've always been so fascinated by it and um, I've never known what it looks like and I think 
that I'm, I'm just very fascinated by the power of birth imagery. I was reading a book by Maggie Nelson called The Argonauts, and in it, she says that crowning images should be everywhere. They should be on mugs. Um, it's one of the, this is an upside down painting you're looking at right now. Um, <clears throat> this painting is going to be in the Aldrich show, Collective Transmission. And in it, you can see artwork by many different artists. This mask by Judy Chicago. These are images I collected online of crowning. And this is Anna Mendieta. Again, everything upside down. I apologize. And this is an upside down <laughs> Louise Bourgeois drawing about birth, but in this case, the birth is happening out of this figure's mouth. This is Judy Chicago primordial goddess dinner plate from the dinner party. And this is another photograph I found online of birth. It reminds me of Frida Kahlo's painting, My Birth. I have a, another one in progress about birth and this may change a lot. So I'm really showing you the, the inner workings of this process. I've always been interested in the body as it really is, not as it is idealized, especially bodies that are female, non-binary, non-conforming, trans, queer, uh, bodies that are not confined by the male gaze. The traditional male gaze, I think, still has some relevance in our society as uh, censorship on social media will attest. Um, this is an altar in progress. This is an altar for my grandmother who very sadly passed away this year of COVID. So it's called Altar for Etta. This is the painting, still in progress. And this is the actual altar setup that I made for her. She loved animal prints. She was very, very flamboyant. She was from Texas. She was very creative. She had a very hard life. She was a beautician for many years. And then without ever having gone to college, she taught herself how to write and she became a writer. She's always been a huge, huge inspiration for me. And she was 96 when she passed away. So this is the painting, which is probably gonna evolve a lot, but uh, it's um, in honor of my grandmother and I started it when she was in hospice and I'm finishing it now after she's passed away and it's really helping me to deal with her loss, the loss of her. Um, usually my work is therapeutic to me in some way and in this case, this is genuinely something I'm doing for her. Here is my painting table. Again, you can see I try to be organized, but I'm always fighting against disorder. Usually I have a glass palette, but I had to get rid of it because it had just gotten so kind of messy. So I'm using paper <clears throat> right now. This is a little movable painting table that's very helpful when I want to move and paint in different areas. And here's some of the books that I've been looking at recently to get ideas for what to include in my paintings. I've been reading Sarah Ahmed, who's a great feminist thinker of our times, and she uh, talks about how citation is so important, and she's talking about in academic writing. In order, <clears throat> in order to create our own histories, um, we need to record our histories because often our histories are erased or ignored. So to me, painting is a way of creating an archive of sorts and a way of uh, citing different artists that have influenced me and that have paved the way for me. So we're coming full circle here. Um, I have some, <clears throat> some other small birth paintings that I've just started. I'm interested in lineages, both familial, maternal, 
and queer, self-made family. This painting here is by Elisa Niesenbaum, an artist I admire. And here is a poem about a mother-daughter relationship. Aging um, has always been also a theme that I'm interested in. Thank you for coming to my studio.